Welcome to another a live interview as part of the Leadership Catalyst series. Today I'm here with Jessica Hartley, who is the VP of Strategy at Instrument, but she's also a DEI advocate and a speaker, and she brings uh, with her 20, 19 plus years of experience in leading digital transformation. Um, digital transformations in and across Fortune 500 companies. So Chastika has experienced um, a lot of different leaders probably come and go and has a ton of leadership experience herself. Plus, she has a bit of insight and expertise on uh, topics around DEI. So I'm really excited to be on here with you, Chastika, today to have a chat about you know what's currently going on and some really actionable, tangible leadership uh, tips and advice for people out there who'd love a, a, a different perspective or just a little bit of inspiration uh, on this Wednesday morning. Awesome. So thank you for thank being you. here, Jessica. Thank you, Ramona. I'm so happy to be here and thank you for the invitation to join you. Uh, excited to have you. So uh, I'm gonna start off right away uh, with saying, uh, you know, one thing around uh, DEI because of where we're at right now and it being top of mind, what is it that you have observed uh, over the last few weeks and what are what is what is what is you know top of mind for you what where is your head at and what are you what are you thinking about what's going on what companies and organizations can do right now yes no absolutely and wow where is my head at it is in probably thousands of places all at once um you know i think with the catalyst of Black Lives Matter and um, all of the things that are happening, not just here in the US, but also globally around race and ethnicity and systemic racism, uh, both not just in police forces, but also within corporate America, right? We're seeing this sort of catalyst happen. Uh, I've been likening it very similarly uh, to a few years ago when we had this catalyst sort of bubble up of women and breaking the glass ceiling and leaning in and having corporations commit to uh, actual targets for women and actual targets for percent of leadership and including women on boards, we're seeing a lot of the same thing happen as it relates to race and ethnicity in corporate America. So we're watching all the headlines, we're watching money being donated, we're watching lots of messages, um, but I think we're also starting to get beyond just sort of the performative um, messaging and performative actions and really start to take a look at not just recruiting and hiring and what those practices look like and where do you go to find great talent because that talent is there. But we're also seeing just sort of bottoms up review of performance and advancement and promotion. And now actually seeing companies say, you know, we know what's not measured is not important. And companies are saying, we're going to put targets in place. We're going to be public about the targets. We're going to increase our board diversity as it relates to race and ethnicity. And we're really going to take actual critical steps to improve the diversity um, of the workforce, but also improve cultures and belonging, right? It's not just mm -hmm. about numbers. It's also about culture and belonging. So we're doing that work um, internally where I work at Instrument. And, um, and then also I'm seeing that work being done um, across the board and a lot of other corporations. Um, so that's really sort of what's top of mind. And I think that's important because, you know, as a woman, as a woman of color, it's been top of mind for me, literally my entire life. And there are a lot of advocates out there. And now that it's going to be top of mind for a lot of folks and really sort of have a sustained momentum moving forward, that's what we need. And I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged for what the future is going to hold. Yeah, I, I love the word encouraged because, like you said, you know, it's it, it's more than just bringing people in. It's really moving them up through the ranks and creating an environment that's that's completely inclusive Absolutely. in all different areas, not just when it comes to the hiring aspect. Yeah, yeah I feel encouraged that way too. Um, mm -hmm. it, it just having you know observing the conversation, seeing how much this has. Uh, gate momentum and um, how many people are also committed and explicit about keeping about keeping up the momentum right and wanting to really invest in the long term into all these initiatives yeah absolutely and that's why it's it's about um not just sort of short-term initiatives this is long-term 
Um, when you're talking about things that are systemic, you have to break things down and make changes and rebuild it up. And also recognize that things that you address now are going to be most glaring, but it could be a year from now when we turn around and say, oh, wow, there's this blind spot that we missed. We had all of these other things that we needed to address. So we didn't even see this other thing that we need to address. And I think the most important thing is seeing it as an evolution and also seeing it as part of our journey. There's no point in time where we'll, we will ever say that we are done, right? Um, we're yeah. not done with women. We won't be done uh, with uh, people of color. We won't be done with the differently abled. We won't be done with LGBTQ. It is going to be an ongoing journey of how we can create environments where people can thrive um, yeah. and have a sense of inclusion and belonging always. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, thank you for sharing that, um, Jessica. That was good to hear, um, and, and also encouraging from you know hearing her, your perspective and what you're hearing because you're in conversation about this topic a lot mm -hmm. with you know, different companies and inside of Instrument as well. So talking, shifting over and talking a little bit about leadership. So one of the questions I'm always curious about when I talk to people who have experienced a lot and who see really what's going on inside an organization is. What is it that makes a leader uh, be more effective when it comes to engagement rates? And you know, measuring engagement rates is something that a lot of companies are doing these days. Yeah. And so there's actually a way to track what are people doing, leaders are doing who have lower or mediocre engagement mm -hmm. rates, and then what differentiates those from people who have really high engagement rates on their on their team. And people just love to work for those leaders. What do you think is like the different? What, what's, that gap in between. No, absolutely. So I I like to think about it um, both sort of in two ways. One, I like to think about it in terms of empathy. And then the other, I like to think about it in terms of empowerment. And so when we think about empathy, it is, you know, the boss or the supervisor, we like to not use the term boss, but the supervisor or the manager or the leader um, that is truly taking the time to get engaged. And by engaged, we mean um, <clears throat> not just always showing up asking questions about work or an assignment or a deliverable, but truly taking the time to get to know people, understand their likes and their dislikes. Um, sometimes it's great to just have a coffee chat. We're doing everything virtual now, so we don't even have to go anywhere, right? To just have a coffee chat and have a human to human personal connection with your team. And I have a lot of, I shouldn't say a large team. It was, it's large for me. I have about 30 plus people um, on my strategy team at Instrument. And I try to, even if on a you know, bi-monthly or quarterly basis, do one-on-one -on -one touch base with all of them to just check in, to have that personal connection, to be a safe space and a resource for them. Um, you know, a lot of leaders I find sort of as you move up, start to put more distance between you and the people that are doing the day-to-day -day work that sort of is the engine that's running the company. And the only way to stay connected and to be a better leader, but also really understand what's happening on the business and stay connected to the ground. And in order to do that, you've got to build those relationships with the people doing the work every day. And then the other yeah. Is around empowerment. I absolutely am someone who believes in, you know, uh, sort of giving power to others, giving people the opportunity to step up and step in, um, not just to leadership, but also decision making. Um, the sort of top down approach, we've, we've moved away from that now. And it's really much more of, yes, I'm a leader. Yes, I have a vision. Yes, I might have some strategy. And in some cases, there will be times where I say, this is what we need to do. And this is what we're going Going to do, but outside of those specific moments, how can you empower your team to make decisions and um, empower them to also uh, really kind of chart their own course? They're as invested in the success of your company as you are, and so that those two words really are things that I I see as sort of cornerstone of my leadership um, capabilities mm -hmm. and also what I think really sort of separates uh, good leaders mm -hmm. from great leaders. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love, I think what you said here with the keywords, they're as invested as you are in the success of the company. And, yeah. and that, that really speaks to the core of trust, like trusting someone, mm -hmm. they're acting with the best intention yeah. for the organization. And I trust them to do the right, you know, make the right decision with the information that they have and, and the skills that they have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Trust is um, key. 
and, and it actually, as you were talking about the, the first point on, you know, the personal touch points, I had to flash back into my, my career in the corporate world. And when I was all the, the, the little moments that kept me loyal to the company, kept me motivated to push my, you know, my limits or in, in, in be fully invested and work hard and accomplish big goals. It was always, it can always mm -hmm. trace it back to some person be this my boss at the time or my boss's boss or a partner in the organization or another key stakeholder giving me that personal attention on a on a really one-to-one -one basis you know trusting in me telling me that i can do this giving me confidence giving me making me feel valued and respected and this was sort of like filling the thing like the tank that is those moments would, would you know keep me going for weeks months if not even years um at a time no absolutely i mean what's that phrase of um people don't leave bad companies they leave bad bosses right yeah. i mean that's that's absolutely people also stay out of loyalty um because of great leaders and great bosses so absolutely Absolutely. Yeah. I've stayed places longer than I probably should have because of great leaders and great bosses, people who were invested yeah. in me personally yeah. and my success and my growth. Um, and then, the, uh, you know, the counter to that is I have left jobs because of um, bosses and supervisors who just, um, you know, were quite awful at their job. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of that, right, when you look at the... Uh, someone who's new to a leadership role because mm -hmm. you know what I find in my work with working people you know who are about a year or two but 10 years into leadership experience this this immense growth curve that happens early on because we're not all born with the leadership skills and oftentimes we were really trained in this in this icy mindset and then all of a sudden we're leading a team and that is a big shift uh, and then the sort of the habits that we take on early on they are mm -hmm. They're often defining the trajectory thereafter because routines come in, kick in, and uh, they can either be good and accelerate me forward, or they can sort of hold me back and keep me in a in a loop that's mm -hmm. not serving me well. So, what would what piece of advice do you have for someone who's just starting off, who might be a year, uh, you know, is about to start a leadership role, or a year to two into a leadership role? That you think this is something to keep in mind, a piece of advice that I wish I had, or that I currently give often to to new managers. No, that's great. I think, um, well, I think, I, I think the first thing I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to give two pieces of advice. Okay. I think the first thing for me is try to learn as much as you can about the job and the role and what's required before you get the job. Right. And mm -hmm. what that means, and I find this a lot with, particularly with women is, um, we're always hesitant or, I'm not quite sure, you know, that old um, uh, sort of, uh, you know, research that said that women feel like they need to, you know, exceed job qualifications over 100 percent to think that they're ready for a job. Um, it, but a part of that is how do you not have to learn how to do the job while you're doing the job, right? So mm -hmm. that is double the effort required. You're not only trying to figure things out, but you're also trying to do a great job. So what that means is declare upfront, right? Have that strategy and vision and confidence and courage in yourself um, that you can take that role, that you can have a role like that. And if you can do that earlier on, you can start to look at the person in that role or look at someone in a similar role and start to learn and pick up the pieces or maybe even ask them for mentorship. So that is the biggest thing I think that has helped me in my career. It's literally what's helping me right now. I just had a conversation with my boss, a supervisor a couple of days ago about the path to get to the C-suite and what would I need to do, you know, whether where I am or somewhere else. And one of the advice and things that we talked about was how can you learn the building blocks now of what's required to operate in the C-suite before you get there, right? That is going to be a big catalyst for helping you to be successful. Um, and then the other piece of advice is to listen, right? Oftentimes you get elevated to leadership roles 
And we're often trying to prove ourselves and get in there and make decisions and take care of business and check off our boxes and tell people what to do and assert ourselves. And what I've found is that it's often really great to just go in and listen and declare that you're listening so that people are not like, what is this person doing sitting sitting in the corner? Um, but listen, listen to yeah. you and listen to your supervisors and listen to what they're saying they want, what they say they need, what they're looking for you to deliver in this role. And then li listen also to your team, right? Understand what's going well, what might be some challenges. For me, that, that idea of the 90-day plan almost of just 90 days of listening and connecting, talking about engaging leaders, right? To go in mm -hmm. and not talk people things, but to walk in and say, I'm here to learn from you. I'm here to listen. That goes a long way, I think, to one, give you a better foundation and knowledge of what you need to get into the role and what you're going to need to at least tackle first. But it also sets the tone for the type of leader that you are going to be in that role. And I think helps people to be more receptive um, and see you again, going back to that trust factor, right? Being able to trust you in your role as a new leader. Yeah, oh, so powerful. The um, you, you mentioned there, you know, the 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 ninety day plan and 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 the the importance of listening. And I always think back of this saying, and I forget who who where I heard this, but the saying of uh, you actually don't learn anything talking. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you're not growing by talking. Other people might, but you're not, and you're not getting better at anything. And really, the moments when we do get better and we grow and we learn, uh, that's when we're listening. And, and I think that sometimes what the challenges that I even observe, right, with, with working with, with people who are in new manager roles or just moving into a new role uh, is this this need to, I got to show up strong, I got to show up and know the way, I got to make decisions. And, and they have this idea of who they need to be as a leader and they don't give enough time early on to listen and to build up to that. So then what they're doing and what they're saying afterwards is actually based on based on the knowledge that they've gathered from those around them, those that are Absolutely. that they are serving on their team and their stakeholders. Absolutely. A hundred percent. When I took this new role where I am now, um, well, there are always things and we say, listen, and don't make any decisions, but you're, there are always things that are like, you have to address this right now. Yeah. Uh, but short of the, you know, the house is on fire, uh, uh, things that you have to take care of. I found that just that listening tour, um, both in, in individual one-on-ones, but also in groups, both up and out at my peers as well, right, as well as uh, down, was immensely helpful in um, just me, again, building a rapport, building that trust, and also putting together a roadmap for how I was going to be able to do my job and hopefully be able to do it well. And when folks along the way that are going to help you achieve your mission, right? I mean, that's the other thing too, is yes, we're all leaders. And in some cases we're leaders of leaders, but you need all of these people to uh, be on board with you to help you achieve your goals. We're not doing anything in isolation by ourselves. And so that's another, I think, key part of this is to recognize that as a leader, you have to lead by influence. And part of that is listening and having people trust that you're going to lead them in the right direction and not off a cliff. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so there's so many pieces that you touched on here, um, including that, you know, creating buffer in mm -hmm. your current role so that you can learn the, the, the building blocks of that next role, which really means master what you're doing right now um, versus going horizontal, look at what's next in terms of going going vertical and start building adding those building blocks to your to your portfolio and your responsibilities and in, in with projects and and you know conversations and mentorship and all that yeah. and then the listening and, and what i'm hearing is like asking a bunch of questions and not shying away from questions right from that hesitation of like, i gotta know it all i'm the leader that's not serving in that moment it's really asking the questions and uh, making that a mantra and being okay with asking the hard questions. You know, if you're the new kid on the block, as I yeah. said, probably for several months uh, when I started uh, the role I'm in now, um, 
you there is a little bit of leeway and license to kind of poke and prod a little bit. And um, oftentimes, if you're a new leader, you're being brought in for your expertise, your experience, or just the different lens that you're bringing to the role and to the organization. So lean into that and ask the hard questions. Yeah, that's actually a strength, right? It's not the weakness, it's a strength that you're coming mm -hmm. in <clears throat> with a different perspective. Um, it may be question things that other people have taken for granted for so yes. long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Thank you so much, Jessica. This was this was so insightful. Um, just hearing it from you, you know, I feel that oftentimes I'm having these conversations, but then just hearing it from people who are doing it day in and day out, who are, who are you know having those conversations with their bosses or seeing what's working, what isn't working, and where they're at in their growth journey. I find that that's often incredibly inspiring for others to see. I'm, like, I'm in the same boat. This is not just me. Everyone's going through these challenges. Everyone is trying to figure this out. Mm -hmm. There are best practices. There are things to do or not to do. Um, and you don't have to wing it or figure it all out on your on your own. Yeah. So thank no, you for coming on. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Ramona, again for the time. And I, you know, I'll just leave your listeners with, you know, be okay with failure. Um, as long as you fail forward, right? So that's what we're always trying to do as leaders. We're never going to get it perfect. We're never going to get it right. Um, but as long as our hearts are in the right place and uh, our intentions are good, even if we do fail, just make sure you you fail forward. So thank you. Yeah. For that. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're taking that lesson with you mm -hmm. um, for, for the future. Um, there are, I know that we have a, there's a webinar that I signed up and that you're actually part of, which is called the Mental... Uh, mental load yeah. um, and I will link to that down below and then um, I'm gonna you know encourage anyone who's watching to connect with Jessica she's an awesome person to have in your network um, and there's a lot to say so I hope that you connect with her and if you know we've talked about instruments so we'll we'll make sure to link that up as well um, thank you so much Jessica for being on and sharing your insights and your perspectives with this audience and people in our network. Uh, and if you have any questions or any feedback or insights or, or takeaways from this conversation, we'd love to know. So please do comment below and let us know um, how this was for you. If you know that someone else or someone else that you know should be listening to this, please do, do uh, tag them as well so we can spread the message and um, make this available to a broader audience. And then we'll be back uh, soon with another such conversation as, as this. Yeah, thank you, Jessica, so much for joining us today. Thanks, Ramona. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Take care.